Before we can continue on with this course, we need to first make sure you've got Xcode properly installed and configured for your environment. So start off by going to the iOS Dev Center, and down at the bottom of the page, under the download section, you'll find a link to Xcode 4. And this will take us to the Xcode 4 landing page. And from here, you'll find some overview information about the current version of Xcode. At this point in time, Xcode 4.3.2 is the current version of Xcode. Now, starting with Xcode 4.3, Apple's changed the way they package and deploy the development tools. Previously, you would go out to the iOS Dev Center, download a large disk image, this is about 4.5 gigabytes, download it to your hard drive, mount the image, and run the installer. And then as each new patch release would come out, you'd have to run through that same process over and over again. So it was kind of tedious previously. But starting with Xcode 4.3, Apple now packages Xcode as a standard Mac app, available on the Mac App Store. So it makes it much easier as new point releases become available. Now over on the right hand side of the screen you'll see a button that says View in Mac App Store. So I'll go ahead and click that. And this will launch the Mac App Store on the Xcode page. And you can go ahead and install this just like any other Mac app. I currently have mine installed already. Go ahead and install this and I'll be waiting when the download completes. Now that Xcode's finished downloading, let's go ahead and open up the launch pad and click the Xcode icon. If this is the first time you're launching Xcode, you'll probably get prompted with a secondary installer asking you to install the mobile device framework. Go ahead and install that. Since I've previously done that step, I'm coming straight to the Welcome to Xcode screen. But from here, I can create a new project, connect to a repository. Any previously open projects I would have would show up under my Recents list. Before launching Xcode for the first time, there are a couple of additional preferences you should set. Under the Xcode menu, Select Preferences, and navigate over to the Downloads tab. From here, there are some secondary components we can install. If we'd like to support older devices, we may want to consider installing the iOS 5 or 4.3 simulators, as well as their associated device debugging support. I also recommend installing the command line tools. On the Documentation tab, you can install a variety of different doc sets. By default, I think the iOS 5.1 and 4.3.1s are automatically installed, and you're free to install additional doc sets as needed. But with this, the configuration of Xcode is complete, and we're ready to start developing.